Lee with Coda Country, and I am back talking with Alex Miller. How are you today, Alex? I'm doing good, Lee. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Excuse my reach. I feel like we're uh, just... <laughs> uh, it's, it's all right. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, and I will say, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of um, personal information. I was doing my research on CRS because this is my first time, mm -hmm. but I saw that this is not your first time at CRS. Oh, I've been here, uh, I think, about... Uh, three times now. So three yeah, times, yeah. yeah. I caught an interview, I think it was maybe with Center Stage Nashville that you did in the yeah. past. So thanks for coming and doing this interview with me. Oh, no problem at all, Lee. My pleasure. <laughs> Great. Let's talk about your um, current charting single, Putting Up the Hay. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a song that I wrote with the guy named Larry Cordell and Jerry Sally. I mean, I grew up on a farm in Kentucky, so I wanted to do a song kind of about that. Now, I will say, Lee, we didn't have no Daisy Bell on the farm like they do in the song. <laughs> right. But uh, we had a lot of fun out there on the farm and I think that's why the song has resonated with people. Uh, it wouldn't have been my first pick uh, as far as a song that's doing well for me, but uh, I'm so glad that it is, and yeah. thank you folks for listening to it. Well, that makes a lot of sense, though, because I, I come from a farming community, too. Yeah. So, it, Yes, it, I, I'm from southwest Georgia originally. Oh, cool. Yes, and so it makes sense, though, that this is a very popular song for you. Um, tell me, how... When you say it's charting, how's it doing on the charts right now? I think it's number two on the CDX, if I'm not mistaken. Ooh, and, number uh, two? Yeah, yeah. Oh. We're, hope, we're hoping for a big old number one. That'd be great. <laughs> it's coming up there. That's, That's right. great. That's right. Well, and I also see that you have an upcoming EP titled My Daddy's uh, My Daddy's Dad. Yes. Tell me about it. Well, it's a, it's, uh, this won't get confusing. It's an EP and a song coming out at the same yeah. time. So the, the song is about my, uh, my granddaddy. I, I worked on the farm for... Um, about 17 years, ever since I was born, uh, before I did American Idol and did that kind of thing, I was a farmhand, and I still I still have to get out there and, and run a tractor every now and then. Uh, but the music's been taking up a lot of my time. But anyways, uh, my granddad, uh, my granddad was the guy that kind of got me started in music. He he wasn't he didn't play music. He just loved music. He was a great country music fan, like the folks that watch you. That's right. And so uh, I just um, I, he instilled that love of music in me. And uh, so he took me around to play and stuff, and, and this song is just kind of a um, dedication to him. It's, it's ba pretty much just him and a song. If you want to get to know my granddaddy, just go listen to my daddy's dad. I really like that you explained that song pretty well to me. Do you have any other notable tracks on the EP coming out? Yes, I do. We just released one called Oh Odessa, and it's uh, on, on all digital platforms like Spotify, Pandora, and all that kind of stuff. Cool. You like it? If you like it, it's kind of a preview for the rest of the project, and it's a five-song EP, My Daddy's Dad is. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's got some other good stuff on it. It's got another song we're going to probably push to radio here um, towards the end of the year. So uh, some good stuff on the record, and, and we're just excited to put it out. Definitely. Well, so there's five songs on this record. My Daddy's Dad, of course, being the title track, and uh, also a song we just put out called Odessa. It's a, a kind of a streaming track. Yeah. Uh, the other three songs on there are a song called She Makes Dirt Look Good. So uh, it's got, <laughs> this is kind of for my 4-H and farming kids. I love that. Uh, also uh, got a song called Ain't Never Saying Never and Last House in God's Country. So those two are kind of more about, uh, maybe more towards leaning towards my granddaddy kind of thing. But uh, the, the whole EP, basically what I had it out and had had all these songs, and I've been doing my daddy's dad at my live shows, and people seem to really be liking it. Yeah. So I wanted to get that music out there, and I had these other songs already ready to go, so I thought, well, just put it on an EP and get it out to the people. Definitely. Tell me, you touched a little bit on American Idol. Mm -hmm. I'd love to know more about that experience. Well, sure. So whenever I was like 17, I was right out of high, you know, right in high school, and so mm -hmm. I didn't know exactly where life was going to lead me. So uh, my mom signed me up for American Idol. <laughs> I, 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 ne I didn't do it myself. She did. <laughs> And uh, so she signed me up for it, and I auditioned on a Zoom call in 2020. Wow. And we're right in the middle of all the mess. I'm all one of the few mess. people with COVID seemed to help. So uh, <laughs> I did that, and um, they, they really liked me on the show. Um, and the, for, for those of you that don't know, I got the top 24, That's and, they, and they, they, they want me to do a Shawn Mendes song during one of the segments, and I said, no, yeah. I said I'm a country music singer, and I, I, that's what I love. That's the music that I love. Yeah. Why I'm not going to go back on what I what I what's got me to here. So um, I stuck to my guns. I did Silver Wings, and they sent me home on a pair of them. But uh, <laughs> I, I feel like I've won in my own way. I, I won the hearts and minds of people. So that yeah. I feel like that's uh, more important than winning a show, anyways. That's right. Yeah, standing on your morals for sure. Yeah. So tell me, um, let's do a little bit of promo for you. Can you shout out your website or social media handles Absolutely. or anything like that? Absolutely. Uh, if you want to look up my website, it's Alex Miller Country, and it's all across all, you know, just look it up on the on the, uh, Safari. But uh, uh, also, uh, make sure to check out my Instagram and TikTok and Facebook. They're all the same thing. So if you want to follow me on any of those, it's A Miller Music. And uh, we, yeah, easy as, easy as, easy as pie. Perfect. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. So tell me, what can people expect if they come to see you at a live show? 
We, you know, I always say that, and I'll joke about it, I say we're like George Strait meets Kiss. Now, we don't have, we don't wear makeup or anything, you know, but we have a good time. It's, it's rock and traditional country. It's, it's honky talk music is what I would describe it as. Yeah. Yeah, but, you know, it's a show, a show you can come see on a Saturday night and not be ashamed to go to church on Sunday morning. Hey, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, that sounds like my kind of show. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about when you started playing music. So I started singing whenever I was three years old, and I was uh, I started in church, and then uh, when I was about six years old, I told my folks, I said, hey, let's go uh, take some guitar lessons. Yeah. And they said, okay. So I've been playing and singing since I was about seven years old. That's about the time I put it all together and haven't looked back or, or gave up since. <laughs> That's so great. And this has been a pretty pretty sub- successful, substantial journey, I would say, for you. Uh, yes. If you would go back and, and give yourself your younger self a piece of advice about your career this far what do you think that piece of advice would be the advice i would give a a, a younger artist like like me a younger guy i would say uh don't take criticism from someone you wouldn't take advice from and don't read the comment section oh yeah those comments will just sting for no reason well i mean i I appreciate it they're helping me out when they say (laughs) something bad about me it just drives people more people to say stuff so i appreciate it that's right that's right well Thank you so much for for talking with me and telling me all about your stuff. Oh, my goodness. If you haven't heard of Alex Miller, now you have on Coda Country. And thanks so much for tuning in. It's CRS Week, and I'm here with Scotty Hastings. Hello, Scotty. How are you? I am great. How are you? (laughs) I'm doing so well. And just like me, this is your first CRS Week. What do you expect to, to get out of the experience or to attain from from being here i don't know if i have any <laughs> expectations um you know i try to live my life not expecting anything and then being surprised the whole time um but uh but yeah i mean just being able to talk to people yeah. i love talking to people so it works out great i do too yeah. Who knew? so um first and foremost let's talk a little bit about um your background and, and how you got started playing music and, and yeah. everything like that yeah absolutely so um I actually, of course, just like every country artist, I feel like I, I grew up in church and singing in church. Um, but uh, it's actually funny. My mom always said that she knew I was in a good place when I was singing. Singing has always been my happy place. And uh, and yeah, you know, as far as playing the guitar and stuff, that didn't happen until COVID hit. Um, when really? COVID hit is when I, I started learning how to play the guitar and started learning how to write. And, um, and it's been a, a blur since. Really, it's been wild. Um, It's been a hell of a ride, and now I'm a a signed artist, and I don't know how that happened. Um, But yeah, it's been (laughs) it's been incredible. And now in that story, you, I want to talk a lot about how um, you're also a veteran. And tell me which uh, which branch of the military you served. Yeah, I was uh, I was in the army. In the army. Yes. Um, But you received a Purple Heart. I did. Tell me about that. Yeah, I did. I was uh, so I was shot ten times in Afghanistan. Um, five times in the shoulder, four times in the hip, and once in the thigh. And, um, yeah, it was rough. That was a rough day. Yeah. yeah I mean, I've had better days, for sure. <laughs> since, um, uh, <laughs> oh, my God. I'm glad you're able to make light of it, because that's no, terrifying. Uh, you know, I mean, at, at the end of the day, you, you, you have to, you know, there's nothing to do, but I, I try to make, you know, try to make the best out of every situation. And, um, you know, you, you have to laugh about stuff, even if it's terrible, because, yeah. At the end of the day, there's nothing you can do about it, you know, and you just have to make the best out of it. And, and thank God you're here, you know. I agree 100 Exactly. Here at CRS Week, yeah. who knew that you would have thought? <laughs> so, okay, well, and, and you said that you didn't start playing until until COVID, but um, did, did you have an idea that you want to do music? Like, is that kind of like a, was there like a main idea or a, a main, like, thought that popped in your head one day that was like, I'm going to be a singer? No, um, no, no, not until, not until I started learning. Um, uh, actually it's, it's funny. So I, uh, I started learning how to play guitar. I started learning how to play, to play all the songs that I grew up listening to. So I grew up in like the, the nineties, early two thousands. And for me, that was the best time for country music. You know, it, it told stories, it meant something. And, and, uh, so I grew up playing, like, I, so I started learning how to play and I, I, I started learning how to play all those songs. And then I was like, man, I have all these thoughts and stuff like in my head, like, you know, I just learned how to play the guitar from YouTube. Um, I can probably learn how to write yeah. using YouTube as well. And uh, so I did that. And then eventually Nashville started opening up again. And there was a there was an open mic night. And uh, I went and I played the first song that I ever learned how to play, which was Should Have Been a Cowboy cool. by Toby uh-huh. Keith. Of course, because, oh, 
God, rest in peace, man. Yeah. Such a such an icon. And uh, yeah, and um, so I played that, and in that moment, I was like, this is what I need to do forever. Um, you know, it's you know, I I have done things since since getting shot, and uh, since you know, you know, I suffer from PTSD, depression, and anxiety. And I've always, I've, I've always found something that kind of gave me an escape and a, and a purpose. Um, yeah. Before music, it was, I was shooting archery with the U.S. Paralympic program. So I would travel all over the country and shoot archery professionally. Wow. And, uh, <laughs> wild. <laughs> and, uh, so I, you know, I found, I found a, a new escape and a new purpose in playing music on stage. It was like, it was like that escape and that peace, but it was magnified a hundred times. And I was like, this is, this is what I need to do forever. Like it became, it became this, I, this, this sense and this, that, that I, I, I kind of obsessed over and needed. And, uh, so, so much so that I bugged the crap out of everyone in Nashville <laughs> to let me on stage for three to four hours at a time, yeah. because for three to four hours at a time, I had complete peace and I had, I had an escape from all the crap that I deal with on a daily basis. And I lived for those moments. And now it has become a career where, now it's not only am I playing music on stage and, and connecting with people, but now I'm also able to help other people find that sense of purpose and that peace the way that I did um, in my music or in, you know, just trying to help somebody with um, with giving them the, you know, hey, look, look at what I'm doing. Like, if I can do this with my, my messed up hand, then you can do this. Like, there's, there's nothing that says that you can't go out and do whatever you want to do. And... Uh, and if anyone can take inspiration from me, do it. Like, I mean, yeah, heck yeah, I've been through some crap, man. Like, let, let me, uh, if, if I can use it in some way, shape, or form to make, to, you know, help somebody, give them hope for the future, or to make them, you know, decide, like, I'm going to, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to try it. And it helping them in the better, that's, that's all I've ever wanted to do. And for, for, you know, to have a platform now to be able to do that, it means more to me than anything. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about your single that you have called "I'm America," because yes. um, there's a lot of really poignant lines in there. I want you to kind of bring to the forefront some really important messages that you have in that song. Yeah, so I I fell in love with that song the moment I heard it. So that song was written by Phil O'Donnell and Wade Kirby, and um, I heard it and immediately, like I said, I immediately fell in love with it. I was like, um, you know, every line of that song is the reason why I joined the military. Um, it's I love that song and it's such a beautiful song because it it doesn't pick a side. It's not left or right. It's about us as a whole. It's it's truly just a song about the beauty within this country and the and everything that makes up this the, the beauty in this country and which includes the people. Um, and I think that that the idea of just taking a step back and seeing how beautiful this place actually is and remembering that we're in this together. You know that we are all we have. And, uh, you know, I think that, that, that it's such a, such a powerful song in the sense that when I listen to it, it makes me want to kind of take a second and look around and see everything that's out there. And, and it's, it's, man, it's just such a, I knew the moment I heard it, I was like, listen, I have to be a part of this. I don't care what I have to do. I'll learn how to record. I don't care. Um, I, I want this song. And, uh, because like I said, I mean, this is that, that song is why I joined the military. Every line of that song, I mean. I, I joined the military because I love this country and I love the people in this country. And, uh, and that was, yeah, and immediately I was like, yeah, this is, this is now my song. I want this song. I don't care what I got to do. I want this song. And, uh, I love it. I love it. And it's such a rockin' song. Yeah. It is. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's great to hear. So before we started the interview, you talked to me a little bit about where you were yesterday, which was DC. Tell me about the performance that you put on there. Yeah. So it was, um, it was a performance for the VA experience team. So um, the VA experience guys are the guys that when you go to the VA, they send a, a survey afterwards to say, you know, how was your experience? Um, you know, it's a very overlooked part of the VA. You know, it's the, the, these teams are dealing with, um, you know, the, the, a lot of negative in, within the VA. They're dealing with trying to fix the VA, which is so important. Um, and, it was just, it was great because most of them are veterans and it was, it was amazing to be able to, we did like a little writer's round. It was me, um, Doug Johnson, who is one of the greatest songwriters of all time. He's a mentor of mine and, uh, just one of my best friends. Um, and Tommy Carlos, who is an, another incredible songwriter. And, um, so we did a little writer's round and it's just, 
you know, veterans are where my heart is. If there's something that I can do for a veteran organization, I want to be a part of it. Um, that's, that's just, I know how much these organizations, including the VA, have helped me. And I want to be able to support them in their mission to help veterans like myself. And, uh, and yeah, what I, I, it's so hard for me to say no to a, to a veteran organization. <laughs> uh, it's so, because I want to do something for them always. Yeah, always. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and I feel like in, in the same regard, you, you've given a lot to your country and it's, you know, in hearing I'm America, um, it seems like your country has given a lot back to you. And so doing as much as you can with, veterans organizations like creative vets or guitars for vets and and that kind of stuff i mean that's you know that's a great way to give back i mean it's you know it's where my heart is you know i mean it really is it, it's easy to uh to stand behind a uh, some organizations that you know have my heart and uh and the veterans will always be that you know it, it that'll always be where my heart is and it'll always be who i want to help support and um who i want to help understand that you can struggle and still be successful and you can struggle and still move forward. And, um, I kind of hope that a veteran, you know, who is struggling will see me out here doing some crazy things that I never thought was possible. And that was never even a dream of mine. And hopefully they take something from that and decide that they want to try something for themselves as well. And, uh, and at the end of the day, from the very beginning, that has been my mission from the beginning is to just, give people hope and to help them understand that they can they can do whatever they want to do and uh yeah (laughs) i absolutely loved hearing about your message today i think that um this is a very much a surprise on my schedule and so to get you to come and sit down and have this conversation with me was very eye-opening and so i thank you for taking your time to, to tell me everything about yeah, you. This is amazing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you just heard it here with Lee and Coda Country. This is Scotty Hastings. Y'all have a good day. Thanks. We're here at CRS and I'm joined by Allie. Oh my gosh, I have been waiting to talk to you forever, <laughs> it seems like. How are you? Amazing. A little exhausted, but amazing otherwise. <laughs> and you were just telling me that you have a write plan this afternoon. Tell me, what's it like working as a songwriter in Nashville? I mean, crazy, because if you think about it, the brain never stops when it comes time for songs. So, like, I was out at 2 a.m. last night at Red Door, and I was like, ah, song idea. And it just it always goes. It's great. It's awesome. I love it. I missed my invitation to Red Door, I, but that's okay. I'll forgive you. I'll forgive you tonight. Next time. Yes, yeah. next yeah. time. Or tonight after the, after the musical. We'll do it. Okay, so tell me about Time for That. I can't wait to hear about this new single. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's the whole idea of you, remember that meme ain't nobody got time for that oh, yes okay <laughs> I say so a hundred percent but a friend of mine came into the right that day and ava was like remember the meme like no one really did a song for the meme and i feel like so everyone would relate and we were like okay what's the best way that we could play this and she was like you know when you're at a bar and someone walks in like a breath of fresh air it's like the music video scene where the cowboy enters oh yeah and everyone's like, oh, waiting for him to make a move. Ain't nobody got time for that. Yeah. So, you know, it's just that whole taking taking things by the reins and taking your moment while you got it. Yeah. You dropped the name Ava. Are you talking about Ava Page? Who's your writers on that? No, Ava Sapalsa and Joe Town. Joe Town. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, so, and is this coming, um, I know that we're like talking about some things being a little secretive, <laughs> but I did want to talk about your album announcement. Is this going to be on your upcoming album? This is going to be on the album. There, it's We literally just finished vocals on Monday for the rest of the album. And oh photo shoots next week. And it's just kind of crazy how everything's coming together very quick. But um, it's a fun, I won't give too much away, but it's a fun storyline of going through love. Because I'm a huge fan, a sucker actually, for a breakup song. Yeah. Always have been. There's just something about a breakup song that I feel like everyone relates to mm-hmm. in some way, shape, or form. Yeah. Um, But going into this project with a new producer, he was like, you're a very happy person. I feel like you need some happier songs in your life. And it really pushed me to create an album fully around happiness of yourself and love and coming into your own in life. And this album kind of goes through the whole storyline of that. Oh, my gosh. Well, and can I give away the title? Is that okay? Let's give it away. Yeah. Okay. So this title is called Love Again. And it's not just Love Again. It's Love, comma, again. I feel like the comma is very important. Tell me. It's super important because I think we got to the point where also picking songs for this album 
there's numerous titles that have love yeah. in it. And I was like, I'm not going to make that stop me from picking a song just because we're going to have love in it a lot. Yeah. Um, so Love Again was literally the last song we wrote for the album. And I was like, I was just talking one day and I was like, yeah, you know, it's, it's another love song again. And I was like, Love Again. That's, love Again. And... I, just, I don't want to give away too much of the the hook for this song because oh, yeah. it just it means a lot to me. But um, again, it goes through that whole idea of healing and coming through life. And I'm just a believer in things happening for a reason. Yeah. And sometimes you have to go through the heartbreak to get to the next one to get to where you're meant to be. Oh my gosh! Well, I can't wait to hear all about that album and every song that you have coming up on it. Oh my gosh, this sounds great. So, okay, before I get you out of here today, I did want to ask you one question that I've asked pretty much everybody. Okay. Now knowing the career that you've had so far and the career that you're going to grow into even more and more, right? Yep. Tell me, if there was a piece of advice that you would give your younger self or even like an, an up-and-coming artist, um, what do you think that piece of advice would be? Jump. Take the leap. I think, again, to, you know what I was saying earlier, every mistake is what gets you to where you need to be. The quicker you make your mistakes, the quicker you get to where you need to be. I love that. Yeah. Ah, I love that so much. Y'all, this is Allie. She's my new country music bestie, I can already I tell you. <laughs> and I'm Lee, and you just heard from her on Coda Country. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for tuning in. Now with me, I have Waylon Hannell. Thanks so much for sitting down and, and chit-chatting with me today. Of course. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited. <laughs> yeah. Super excited. So let's talk about this new single that you come have, have coming out on Friday. It's uh, Lighten That Load. Tell me a little bit about that song. Well, I, uh, my co-writer on this song, his name is Bernie Nelson. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Bernie, he is a multi-million platinum songwriter, man. He's written hits like uh, Daddy Never Was Cadillac Kind from, uh, from Confederate Railroad. And uh, just being able to be around him and learn stuff from him, you know, and steal as much as I can in quotations. Yes. It's, uh, borrow. It's, borrow. Exact, borrow. <laughs> and uh, so I, that was my co-writer on that song, and we wrote half of it at his home in Texas and half of it over the phone because uh, I live from, I'm just a little dirt town in uh, Michigan called Millington. And... Um, so he called me. He goes, hey, I, I want to change something on this song. So I said, okay, how are we going to do that? I'm over a 1,000 miles away. <laughs> he said, well, I think I know how to do that Zoom if you can. I said, I'll figure it out. <laughs> so we ended up doing it over Zoom and finishing it up. And uh, it's uh, at Country Radio now. It's almost, It's been on there two and a half weeks, I believe. Wow. It's already at uh, number 71 on the Music Row breakout chart wow. here in Nashville. And, uh, you know, just having a brand-new single that's, so fresh and so new and to have that response i'm pretty proud of myself yeah, you know definitely. i'm very proud of myself and uh if you like like your outlaw music your 90s alan jackson stomp your boot get down you need to listen to this song yeah. i love this song and i'm sure you guys will love it <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. Yeah. Well, and you were just talking about how, how proud you are of, of all the accomplishments you've had, especially since you're only 21. 22 now. 22. I'm old now. Okay, so wait, when, when was your birthday? January 17th. Oh, okay, okay. So 22 years old yeah. with lots of accomplishments. You already have two projects under your belt, um, the latest being New Old Outlaw. Is that yeah. right? Tell me about um, the recording process of, of some of that and how long that took you. Well, man, it was it was only my second album that I've ever done, mm -hmm. and I recorded that at Omni right there on Division Street, and uh, it's just it it was so cool because I was always intimidated about going in the studio and thinking I have to do everything perfect. It's nothing like that, you know. You come in, you have fun. It's not work to me, you know. And I just have a bunch of fun in there. I do my thing. I talk to everybody. And uh, the recording process, it's just so cool. It's relaxed, laid back. You learn uh, people's names. You learn what they play, the session players. Mm -hmm. And they're so talented. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I never knew there was so much talent in one room. You know yeah. what I mean? So uh, everything is just perfect mm -hmm. when it comes to music, yeah. in my opinion. Precise. Definitely. So, okay, in talking about everything that led you here, um, Tell me a little bit about what got you started in music in general. Sure. So uh, uh, I never picked up any instrument until I was 15 years old. And uh, I taught myself how to play guitar off YouTube. I've never had a lesson in my life. Wow. And uh, 
and it was kind of funny. I love telling the story. It's kind of a trademark. Yeah. And uh, so my mom, she, I asked her for a guitar, asked her for a guitar, and her and my dad, uh, they finally broke down and bought me one for Christmas. And I was 15. Taught myself how to play, and she goes, you need to start singing. You know, people like that stuff. If you're at a party or you're at a bonfire, you whip out your guitar, you sing a few songs. Mm-hmm. It's just people like that stuff. And I said, no, no, I just don't <laughs> want to do that. And uh, so anyway, she goes, okay, that's fine. And mind you, I'm 15, so I still rode the bus to school. Cool. Went to school, came home, and it was in between sports, so I had time to play. Yeah. And I looked for my guitar, looked for my guitar for probably two hours, and I couldn't find it. So I gave my mom a call. She was uh, at work in Genesis in Michigan. And I said, Mom, where is the hell is my guitar? She goes, you're not getting it back. I said, what do you mean? She goes, well, you're not going to try to sing. You don't deserve to have it. She kind of blackmailed me in a way. And uh, so I said, fine, I'm not going to do it. And I started uh, losing the calluses on my fingers that I built up. And I said, screw it. So I caved in and it just kind of set it off, man. And I got my first gig at my uh, local pizza place in Mich- or, uh, Millington. Cool. And it just, after playing for uh, a few hundred people, which was huge to me, it yeah, still is, say, it still yeah. is to me. And, uh, and an, I didn't even get paid, but somebody tipped me 20 bucks. And the first person ever. Yeah. And I said, dude, I can get paid for this? This is <laughs> unbelievable. And it just, that's how it kind of got started. And I wouldn't be sitting here talking with you. Um, if my mom hasn't blackmailed me. (laughs) Mother's no best. Let me just go ahead and lay that out there. If you were to go back, now knowing what you do, and and keep in mind, that that was seven years is not a long time, but it is in the big scope of things. It is. Yeah. Is there a piece of advice that you would give yourself um, when you first started playing and singing? Uh, I would say never be afraid to be yourself because that's the only way you're going to get stuff done is if you fake it you know that saying fake it till you make it Mm -hmm. there's a reason why when people make it when they fake it everybody kind of sees through that so always be true to yourself don't let anybody hold you back and don't be afraid to do things your own way because that's how Waylon Jennings Willie Nelson George uh, George Jones Johnny Cash that's how they all did it they did it their way and look they're the biggest superstars ever and those are my idols, and uh, I live up to that. And I don't, I don't like to be anybody but myself. Right. I'm comfortable with it, and I'm, I like to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a great way to be. Yeah. Listeners out there, thanks so much for tuning in. You just heard from Waylon Hannell. Thank you again for coming on the show today. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here with Boomtown Saints. We have Chris and Ben, and congratulations are in order. I'm hearing because you just received Music Row Magazine's Independent Artist of the Year for 2023. Congratulations! Thank you. So, okay, so what is, tell me what all that entails. Like. So, uh, Independent Artist by Radio Channels is somebody who does not have a radio. Right. Uh, so, everybody who lives in the radio channel is going to be pushing songs for their artists. Our record label, it's not having a radio We do have a team behind us that are amazing. And so we were the most fun uh, artists that did not have this time radio team. That's awesome. Yeah, especially oh, yeah. with your songs, Blacktop Don't, Go to Heaven, everything like that. So for, I will say too, you also were the recipient of Coda Country's duo of the year. Yes, yes, so, yes. 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 Oh, oh my gosh. Well, and that's all that's all fan voted. So the fans out there really love what you guys do. Yeah, well, and we've been talking about it for a long time. You know, and I'm so glad I finally get to put the, the names and faces together. And it's awesome to meet you guys. So, okay, tell me, you have. Uh, your debut EP came out in June 2023, including those songs that I just talked about. But you have new music coming too. Tell me a little bit about uh, "Good Day to Get Gone." Um, and it's, it's one of those songs that's actually right now our opener for this live. It's the song to open with. Uh, we never really had a true up-tempo driving song um, that you would run to or work out to. But the black top down is actually mid tempo. Yeah. Um, and so this song is kind of just pushes the tempo. It's a very positive message. Uh, imagine driving through the you know back roads, top down, sunny day. 
that's the song. Perfect. Um, and you guys wrote it together? Uh, so we're actually some friends of ours. Uh, Seth is someone who was like, would you be interested in this? are like, uh, yeah. 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 We've, we've, always, we've always had the philosophy of, you know, like we write five songs, somebody brings five songs, and these five songs are better than ours. We're going to cut this. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because but they also have to make us feel something. Because they make us feel something we really can do. Is yeah, we, we have another song that was this intention that they might actually be the next song. We actually wrote that with some friends of ours, uh, Philip, uh, Philip White Page, and that's the song. Uh, all the little things that make the American dream real. So it's, you know, the American dream is about Now, the American dream is your home family. You have something to eat, you have it, you know, you're happy, you get to go home and eat. No, we're in free country. Uh, it's that song that we, we were with them and also we were the next single we know that it's like four days before we know that yeah, that's awesome to hear just because I I'm ready for new, new music I know you guys are too ready to put it out there and, and start to go on radio and, and stream it and everything like that so okay a couple personal questions for you guys I know not too personal that's too personal um, now knowing what you do as the artist that you are um, if you were to go back and give yourself some advice back in the day before you started playing or singing or anything like that, what would you say? Oh, oh. <laughs> don't do that, man. That's a, that's a good advice. Just a blanket don't. Unless <laughs> somebody tells you. No. Oh, my gosh. One of, one of the biggest things I would have, if I was telling my younger self, you know, like, all of the things that fall into my system that you know, play that time, and you can break away from the system a little bit, do your own thing. Just get all the patterns down, get what you need to do, and just keep your eye on um, I think mine was the same two things like the hardest to ask. Like, what kind of good advice can you give? What kind of good advice can you give? It's the same thing I tell myself back then. It's two things. Um, the first thing is there is a method to the madness in this industry. Um, every now and then you have a little bit of Everybody sees them the same, but it's a perfect example. Everybody sees them as a last thing to do. But it works for them. People don't realize how many years went into refining exactly what they do. You can't just step in and be that. So people try to emulate what they see. It's not the case. It's actually a, a base that you have to have. That's one. Hi, how are you? Uh, the second thing is, in this industry, helping somebody else out doesn't stop you. Yes. It does not stop you. Helping somebody else out actually coming into the perfect. All these guys that are together now, they knew each other a decade ago and they came up through the ranks. I'm not saying it happens for everybody, but help other people out. It, 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 not only just for the karma of it, God looking out on you being like, take a job, but it might help your career out in the future. It's not for you to help other people. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, though. People, because people if you have a, Yeah, if you have a good little group of people that you can do. A long time. Oh, I really don't know. I, I, told, I told this to my wife last night when we got, we got the magazine and saw that. Wow. Wow. Twelve years. That's awesome. So it's like just, just don't stop. Keep up the grind. Definitely. Well, talking about the grind, what's next for you guys? I know that you're talking about releasing new music. Can you watch shows coming up? It's coming up. Yeah. That's what we're trying to do. Get out this, this summer, this fall schedule. Get out, start in April, and just hit the road as hard as we can. Awesome. Any new spots? Any new venue spots that you guys are in? Yeah, so we get to go. Um, we get to go to Canada. Uh, we are going to South Dakota. To Alaska, we got to check the last one for this. Um, we're going to Nebraska. We have to Nebraska. And I think once we get through what we have on the schedule right now, we're going to have like three states that we have a place. So, anybody in Hawaii who wants us to come out and play? Can just, I also go? Yeah, okay. I mean, with no problem, we'll be a part of the show. Okay. <laughs> Be Absolutely. Guys, you just heard from Ben and Chris of the Boomtown Saints. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you guys so much for doing this interview today. I'm so glad that you guys could I can finally meet you. So thank you. Yeah.